Hi and welcome to Temeco. In this video, we will work with the concept of the Jacobian matrix in the context of an equation of motion of a mechanism. In this lesson, we will show you how to calculate it and by the end of the video, we expect you to be confident in this procedure. The concept of a Jacobian matrix is very important in the formulation of constraint systems and we not only must be careful with its calculation, but most of all understand what it is. When we started talking about constraints, it was clearly understood that constraints restrict relative movement between connected bodies in a mechanical system. This causes a reduction in the total number of degrees of freedom of the system. We showed a way to calculate this remaining number of degrees of freedom by counting the number of bodies and subtracting the number of restricted relative movements. We also showed how to transform physical constraints into mathematical expressions that could be used to formulate the equations of motion of the system we are simulating. The problem is that these mathematical expressions or constraint equations cannot be directly used in our equations of motion. We need to make sure that we are passing the right amount of information to the equations. Which information, you might ask? Well, we need to also convey the information of which generalized coordinates are these constraints affecting. This means that we not only need to specify the number of constraints in the system, but also the nature of their restriction. To accomplish this, we use the Jacobian matrix. This matrix is the one we will use in our equation of motion. The inputs needed to calculate the Jacobian matrix of our system are the constraint equations, which we know how to calculate, and the set of generalized coordinates also from our system. Okay, so I have those elements. You say, what now? Let's bring a simple mechanism, like a pendulum. This works with any complex mechanism, so don't be fooled by the fact that it is a simple pendulum. This mechanism has a body attached to the ground through a revolute joint leaving one degree of freedom, which in this case, it is easy to see that it is the rotation around point O in the revolute joint. The constraint equations of this system are C1 is Rxa minus L by 2 cos theta A equals 0. C2 is RyA minus L by 2 sin theta A equals 0. For our purposes, we will collect these constraint equations into a vector of constraints, something like this. C equals C1, C2 transpose. As we have one body, our generalized coordinates for this planar mechanism are Q equals Rxa, RyA, theta A transpose. Now, the Jacobian matrix of this system is defined. The partial derivative of this vector of constraints with respect to the vector of generalized coordinates. This is written like this. If we do this partial derivative, this results in CQ equals delta C1 delta Rxa delta C1 delta RyA delta C1 delta theta A delta C2 delta Rxa delta C2 delta RyA delta C2 delta theta A. Finally, the Jacobian matrix of our system is CQ equals 1, 0, L by 2 sin theta A, 0, 1, minus L by 2 cos theta A. Notice that none of the constraints include generalized coordinates that change with the function of time, but we need to be aware that they might exist. In this video, we showed one method on how to calculate the Jacobian matrix of the system. The concept of Jacobian matrix deserves careful study. This is why I invite you to search for information on this topic. As we presented it today, for the type of mechanisms we will be using during our course, I'm sure you'll be able to get the constraints and later the Jacobian matrix needed in your equation of motion. Thanks for watching and see you soon.